All right, so there's this thing I learned about in the past few weeks, so I thought I'd try it out. I'm talking about the lossless scaling app that you can get for your PC in order to increase the FPS in your games, if your graphics card is less than satisfactory. It is recommended, however, to be used on Windows only, so I'm not sure if it would work on Linux using Wine. So if anybody has Linux, let me know if it works for you. This is how the app itself looks like, and I will be using it on Forza Horizon 5 with my GTX 1050 2GB. I had to change to OBS in order to record since Nvidia Shadowplay does not want to capture the overlay from the lossless scaling app. And it seems that OBS is putting a bit more strain on my system since I am seeing around 3 to 5 FPS less than usual. I will set a base score at medium presets in the benchmark mode and then I will also use the in-game enhancing options in order to compare them to the lossless upscaler. Here we have the base score at medium settings and it got an average of about 23 FPS. For AMD FSR 2.1 I got an average of 19 while also looking a bit worse than the base render. Although I do not have an Intel card, I thought I might as well just use XCSS also since I had the options, and the results were not that great. I also set it to performance, hoping it would help, but I only got an average of around 19 FPS. I also tried AMD Fidelity CAS, but I set it to performance and this is the only time that the in-game enhancing options actually help a bit. It managed to get up to 25 FPS this time. Alright, so I assume that for most people these would be considered as unplayable frame rates. So let's take a look at what the upscaler can do. I decided I'll start with a base multiplier of 2, which means that whatever FPS you are capable of getting, the upscaler will double that amount. But it will also take a toll on your performance, so the normal FPS you would normally get is now even smaller. But only by a bit. So for this run, it managed to get about 38 FPS, which is 15 more than the base run of 23 which I believe it's about a 65% increase. That already looks pretty good, without actually dropping any quality. I also tried a multiplier of 3, getting an average of around 55 to 56 FPS. And then I also tried the multiplier of 4, but with this settings I did not get much more than the times 3 multiplier, and also was getting some choppiness and much more waviness in the image. So to me, it looks like a multiplier of 3 would be the limit for my GPU, without any further tinkering with the program or game settings. And to be honest, for a game like this, 60 FPS are plenty. Now, I have to say that if you intend to use this for any competitive gaming, you will lose some responsiveness, depending on your settings. Which makes me to believe that it would maybe be much better suited for most arcade type games and RPGs. Now. Let's check some actual in-game performance. First off, the base FPS, so around 26 to 27 FPS in the busy parts of the festival site, and while going outside, the average would be somewhere around 30 FPS, which normally would be more, but OBS is being a hug for me for whatever reason, and normally with Shadowplay I would get slightly higher FPS. Now while trying to start the upscaler for the first time, my PC actually froze and I figured out it was OBS's fault. So I tried to start up the programs in a different order, eventually managing to have it work out and took a sample recording with a times 2 multiplier and managed to get an average FPS of mid 40s, but the game was stuttering and wasn't really playable. You probably think it is because of the upscaler, but it wasn't. Actually it was OBS's fault, I never actually used this program to record my screen. I normally use Nvidia Shadowplay, which is much more seamless and less intensive, it seems. So I did the next best thing I could. I filmed it with my phone. I know, it looks terrible, but bear with me. As you can see now, the FPS is slightly better and the gameplay is much smoother. And with the multiplier of 2, I get well over 60 FPS in the open world. And some are around 50 in the festival site. And this would be enough for me, and probably for most people. Also given the fact that the game has a maximum limit of 60 FPS in the game settings. But let's see the times 3 multiplier also. In the festival site it would be an average of 75 FPS, and while going around on the fields, it managed to go up in the high 80s. I also tried a live race. I know, I know, my camera work is not the best, nor is my racing while holding my phone. But the responsiveness of the car did not feel any worse than usual, and the game was not laggy. 
I have to say that the crashes I had were because of me looking at the phone screen while the upscaler did not affect my gameplay in any bad way. And overall I would say it would make for a really nice experience. Also there was not much waviness around the screen, but there was some at times. But nothing that would look bad or distracting. All in all it was a very enjoyable experience. Normally I would be playing on the lowest settings with only the car model being a bit on the higher quality side and at 30 FPS. This was a huge improvement without having to actually spend anywhere around $200 for another graphics card. Which also got me thinking, so I tried it on the extreme quality preset, but the results were very disappointing. The upscaler would not even work and that was because the GPU also needs to have some headroom in order to use the upscaler. So I went back and changed it to ultra quality settings which are the second highest settings in this game. And while this time the upscaler did kick in, the game got very laggy and overly wavy, rendering it unplayable. So is it worth paying about $7 in order to increase your FPS, rather than just going to get one of those stupid expensive graphics cards these days? Obviously, yes, you basically get frame generations on any kind of graphics card, regardless of how old it is. And also, if you wouldn't want to or don't have the money to upgrade to a better graphics card. Since you don't have a really strong GPU, frame generation in this case actually makes sense. Yeah, I'm looking at you, NVIDIA.